You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. to be an addict now he's substance free telling all about his crazy journey take off that mask and take on your addiction alan charles author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention and the host of the alan charles show is here to bring hope to the hopeless as he shares his unbelievable luck at surviving a 24-year drug addiction Alan's raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. So now, please welcome the host of The Alan Charles Show, Alan Charles. He's given us the real story, The Alan Charles Show. Ups and downs, losing jobs and the glory, The Alan Charles Show. He helps others avoid that purgatory. The Alan Charles Show. Good evening and welcome. This is indeed the Alan Charles Show live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I am your host, Alan Charles. Welcome to my show. I'm coming to you live from New York City, a very comfortable 57 degrees with some clouds here in the city. And I am glad you're here. You're in the right place. This is where we come to talk about addiction, recovery, and reality. I give it to you straight. I give you what's really going on, and I share what went on behind the mask that I wore for years and years and years and went through this horrific 24-year cocaine addiction. And I was very fortunate and miraculously walked out the other side, which is the name of the book that I wrote walking out the other side. Uh, So I wrote this book. And after writing it, I started to speak around the country. I went to schools, colleges, high schools, businesses, anybody that wanted to hear a message about recovery and the dangers of drugs and alcohol. And then from there, that led me to do this weekly radio show. So I'm here to help you. You're tuned in to the No Stigma Zone. We talk about drugs and alcohol and the disease of addiction. So I know for me, I was out there for a long time because I didn't want help. I didn't think I had a problem. But then in addition to that, there was also the stigma of addiction. What people thought about people that were classified as a drug addict or an alcoholic, and I certainly didn't want to be known as one of those, and I didn't think I was. And There is a very troubling perception to what a drug addict or an alcoholic is, and we're starting to change it, but we're not quite there. So so you're in the right place. We're going to talk about all about that. Now, today's show, the topic, we're going to talk about the stress and the anxiety of heading back out into the new normal. So things are starting to open up again. They're starting to relax some of the different things that we have had to abide by um, staying in the house if you weren't part of the essential businesses that remained open. And now we're going into phase one here in New York, uh, different parts of you may be in areas around the country where everything has seemed to start to open up. So There's a lot of pressure and a lot of anxiety, especially that we were secluded and we were isolated. And you know what? There's a lot of anxiety heading back out into this. And what happens if you're somebody in early recovery? 
you know what? I shouldn't even just say early recovery. If you're in recovery and you have been isolating, this has been a very stressful and tough time. And I can share that because I know I've been going through it. And a lot of people that I know that are in recovery have shared the same thing. So that's what we're going to talk about a little later. That's the topic, how to get through this, how to go back outside, how to deal with the anxiety and the added pressure. And we will we will talk all about that and see if we can help you. If you'd like to call in, if you have questions, if you want to add something to the show, I'd be more than happy for you to call in. Our number is 866. 866- Six four five one one four five one, and uh, we'd be happy to get you on and call in. It's I'm all here by myself, other than my uh, wonderful engineer Sean. So uh, I would love for you to call. And while I'm talking about my engineer Sean, Sean, why don't we go to the news? And let's talk a little bit about what's going on out there. And it's going to kind of pertain to, to what our topic is on the show. So Americans, this is a, an article, news article I, I found in the New York Times. And it's, it talks about how Americans are coping with coronavirus and the related stress. We're facing a public health and economic crisis all rolled into one. And we the the use of alcohol and drugs from a bunch of surveys had shown um, has shown a major increase in usage and this is not a surprise i've been talking about this for months and it's concerning and uh let's see there was something conducted by the recovery village a florida based network of addiction treatment centers and americans reported a 50 increase in alcohol consumption last month and a 36% increase in marijuana and prescription opioids. Oh, that's just wonderful. So experts have voiced their concern and and have uh, started to talk about the increased rates of addictions afterward due to the stress of isolation, boredom, decreased access to recovery resources, and also unemployment. So we, we spoke a little bit about this a couple of weeks ago. So not surprisingly, uh, there, the increase in alcohol consumption and drugs is specifically higher in the states that have had the higher coronavirus numbers. So it is no shock to hear that here in New York and New Jersey, <laughs> they have been, they've reported a 67% increase in alcohol consumption and it's pretty straightforward people are using drugs or alcohol to cope with life circumstances such as stress or other boredom and they it it ends up becoming a habit and it leads to sub substance use disorder that's exactly what they're talking about exactly what we've been saying and It's individuals are out there using drugs and alcohol in an attempt to self-medicate and cope with symptoms of a mental health disorder they can develop or is occurring during their substance use disorder. So there are a lot of things going on. There's a lot of concerns. I see a lot of articles out there and, and talk about people starting to use more Xanax and Adderall and things, prescriptions that they're getting for anxiety and they're increasing their drinking. It's scary. So I want you all to be aware out there if you're struggling with some of that, be present and and address it right away because the longer you wait, the harder it's going to be to address it. Okay, the second news story I want to talk about, which is, wow, it's kind of crazy, but, you know, you do what you got to do. San Francisco gets alcohol, tobacco, and marijuana for addicts quarantine in hotels. So the San Francisco Chronicle is reporting that they San Francisco is using private donations to deliver alcohol, tobacco, and medical marijuana to a few dozen people dealing with addiction as they isolate or quarantine in a city-leased hotel during this pandemic, which was confirmed 
yesterday. And we're going to take a quick break. I'll finish this story for you. You don't want to miss it. You're listening to The Alan Charles Show on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We will be right back. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations, Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Welcome back to the Alan Charles Show, live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and I'm your host, Alan Charles. And before we went to break, we were doing the news, and we were in our second news story talking a little bit about what's going on out in San Francisco. And as I shared, there are private donations that are being used to deliver alcohol, tobacco, and medical marijuana to a few dozen people who are dealing with addiction as they isolate or quarantine in a city-leased hotel during the pandemic here, and that was confirmed on Wednesday. So uh, most of these people are homeless people. There are about 270 people, and they're staying in hotel rooms, and they have either been diagnosed with COVID-19 or waiting to see if they possibly had exposure to the virus. And out of these 270 people, there's nearly a dozen people who received alcohol and more than two dozen that received tobacco. And then there are a handful, I guess, that are getting delivered medical marijuana. So they are out there trying to help. And um, let's see, Dr. Grant Colfax, San Francisco's public health director, said the harm reduction approach is widespread and based on decades of sound public health policy. Our focus needs to be supporting them and he said of the people who are being isolated or under quarantine so for people experiencing alcohol withdrawal the department of public health calculates the minimum amount needed and delivers them the, with their meals the department also facilitates the delivery of medication for people trying to kick heroin the department does not help procure recreational marijuana so well that's good to hear so that's what's going on in the news. <laughs> so, very interesting. People are struggling all over, and that leads us to our topic here today, how to deal with this new normal. We're going to be heading back out. People are going to be headed back to work. People are continually going out a little bit more. Things are starting to open up and we're being thrown back out there on how to deal with this. And there's added pressure. There's added anxiety. 
I know even for me, I, where did I have to go today? Oh, I went to the bank earlier this morning and I'm out there and I have my mask and I'm, you know, I'm trying to stay safe and I'm walking away from people. But there's a certain percentage of people that still don't put their masks on or they wear them on their chin. And I'm like, really? Why do you, why do you even bother wearing a mask if you're going to have it on your chin? It doesn't. You're walking by all the people. Everybody got their mask on, and you're walking by with the mask on your chin. What is that? What does that even do? So um, I can't help myself if I see somebody that doesn't have a mask on or is wearing it inappropriately. I have been saying something, and. You know what? I I can't help myself. I, I'm not looking to, to get into anybody's business. And if you're wearing a mask, that means I'm not going to get the droplets or anything from a cough or a sneeze from you. But if you don't, I you know what? You might not care, but I do. I certainly don't want to get this virus, and I don't want to die because you're an a-hole and you decided that you're above a mask or that you're not going to do what everybody else is doing to help one another. So, yeah, I'll I'll say something. I'm not shy, and you know, eventually there'll be a response of why they can't wear it, and it'll make sense. But at the end of the day, um, we're all struggling, and there's that anxiety that we're talking about it going back out because we're facing this silent killer that we only know a little bit about we know what the what they've told us and we don't even know if all it is is true what they're telling us i mean they hope they're right but they're making mistakes as they go and they're learning as they're going along so so we're all kind of learning as we're going along but that does not change the anxiety and the stress of going outside wearing a mask walking around trying not to be touched by anybody and you know what let, let's look at it this way, because I am talking about this for anybody. So, yeah, we talk about addiction and recovery, but you don't have to be in addiction or recovery to really face all this. This is the same for everybody. But again, I will add on this extra layer. If you're in recovery or your early recovery, these things could look daunting and overwhelming because addiction is tough. Addiction for most of you, it's an escape. It's a defense against the world. So what does that sound like? That's not unlike what everybody has been going through over the last couple of months. We have this defense against the world. We're staying inside. If, you, if you're part of the essential workers and you're going outside, you have this fear that you're going to get this virus, but you have to go out and do what your job is. And you need to make money and so you can live. And, you know, the other people that are staying home that don't have jobs, that's a whole nother set of stresses and stuff like that. So no matter what your situation is, we have all had had new stressors and new anxieties that are being given to us. So what do you do? You first have to recognize the fears, except that we have been through a kind of trauma. So this is for everybody. Be gentle on yourself. If you're going through some depression, you have some anxiety, uh, you're trying to make decisions of how to go back out there, what do I do next, how do I get my life back on track, those are all very big issues to deal with. And what I would like for all of you to do is to really be gentle. Be gentle on yourself. Be gentle on your friends and on your loved ones because we are all going through this where it's scary. We don't know what's up and what's down. We're not sure where we're headed, but we want to be positive. So we really need to support each other. And that starts with not beating yourself up. So that, that's a very big piece that I want to share and to give to you all is that you should be gentle. Don't be negative on yourself. We have enough stuff 
going on. And we will continue this conversation when we come back. You're listening to The Alan Charles Show live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And we will be right back. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, Unlock Your Full Potential with Limitless Growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and Tune in radio. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale, an international initiative called Nurse now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. Welcome back to the Alan Charles Show. We are live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I am your host, Alan Charles. And I am glad that you're here with me tonight. And before we went to the break, we are talking about heading back out to the new normal. Things are starting to open up. And what's it going to be like going out there? We now have new stresses and new anxieties. We have to head back out with masks and social distancing. And the world that we knew back before February of 2020 is completely different. And uh, so we've got this new norm that we have to deal with and everybody is dealing with it. And whether you're in recovery or you're early on in your recovery, this has become a daunting task and a lot to deal with. So I shared with you before we went to break that addiction is tough. It's an escape and what we were going through with this pandemic and the isolation that, again, also was an escape, and it was a defense against the virus. So we've stayed in and have started to do all these different things to, to battle this. So it's doing something to our inside. So as you start to head back out, one of the things that I suggest you do is start to recognize your fears and accept that you've been through this incredible trauma. I did mention that before we went to the break. But as you're recognizing these fears, really see if you can connect to them and what is going on. Because I believe, and, and, and through a lot of practice, I've been able to sit down and think through things of why I'm feeling the way I am or what's going on. Or if I don't feel well and there's something, there's an anxiety or not in my stomach, I also have to take the time to try to stop and think about what's going on. Because just because I have a knot in my stomach, that's usually a pretty good 
level of uh, letting me know that there's something going on, that there's something not right. And I don't know particularly what it is, but I know there is something. And I think many of us get that ping in the stomach, um, especially now that we're heading back out. There's, there, your ping could be being anxious and not knowing what to do, but there is something going on. So what you have to learn, and, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago and even alluded to it last week, and it's very appropriate as we're going through this time, uh, is living one day at a time. And you almost have to establish it as, okay, today is another day that I was given on this planet to live. And, you know, most people... I shouldn't say most. A lot of people, we get up, you hop out of bed, I'm up, boom, 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 boom. You get your day going. You're going to go work out. I have things to do. What I'm asking you to do is to be present, consciousness. And it's hard if if you've never practiced it before. You... You become you're almost on automatic pilot and you don't realize that you're you're going through your life and you may be very productive and that might work for you. But if you're at all struggling and you know if you're struggling or not, you don't even have to look in the mirror. You can tell and you know if you're struggling. Stop yourself in the morning. What can I do different? So there are some mornings I wake up and I don't want to get out of bed. And I know my alarm is about to go off. I'll I'll look over and I see it's 530 and I may have the alarm set for 545 and I'm going to get up and work out and I'm closing my eyes and I do I want to hit the snooze. And you know what? I will take the time if I catch myself and I'm like, okay, just relax. You want to get up and work out. Don't beat yourself up. Just stay there. Just relax. When the alarm goes off in two, three minutes, just shut it and just think about your day. So I don't have to jump right up out of bed and get my day going. I could do something different. So I could sit there and I could meditate or I could think about what my day is going to look like or I could run through a list of appointments and different things that I need to do during the day. What am I going to accomplish today? Or I could put a schedule together. So as I'm getting up and I already have that in my mindset. And for me, um, as soon as I get out of bed, I get on my knees and I, and I pray. I thank God for allowing me to get up and to giving me this day and then I get right in and and I start to focus because I have set myself up that okay I'm on my knees now I've gotten up out of bed Um, I hope I'm going to do a little meditation in a little bit I'm going to get my coffee together Uh, I'm going to start to get my things together because you know my new workout facility is right here in my apartment so I'll start to get that stuff ready and get dressed So I've got a a few things going on that I now have put into place to help me start my day, to live that day one day at a time. And I think whether you're lining up to go to work, whether you have to get up and you got to get your kids ready, I mean, give yourself an extra five or ten minutes in bed. And I've never said this to anybody. This just kind of is I'm looking and envisioning how do I do this, what works for me. And I I think that this, I know it has helped me. Maybe it'll help you. Just get your day together. Have it's a mindset. It's it's having purpose and it's being present, being present in the moment. And that is probably one of the bigger things, especially if you're dealing with addiction or dealing with recovery and having anxiety. Try to get your mindset that I'm okay today. Hopefully you were in bed before 12 o'clock. And if you had any alcohol or drugs the night before, you can always start over. This is your first day sober. So get yourself back on the horse and get yourself out there and get going. So those 
are a few things that we're talking about. We're going to give you a whole bunch more as we come back. But as we go to break, friend of the show, Dwight Doc Gooden, World Series champion. Let's hear what he has to say. Hello, this is Doc Gooden of the New York Mets, 1986 World Series champion. You are listening to the Alan Charles Show live on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio with my man, AC. Let's get it. Global Glory, that's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. If you're a person caring for someone living with dementia, then this program is for you. It's designed for families and friends coping with the challenges of caregiving. The foundation of care, Susan Kohler believes, is communication. Innovative Dementia Care with Susan Kohler provides strategies to keep the lines of communication open between you and your loved one, increase quality interactions, decrease the burden of daily care for you, the caregiver. Join Susan, 11 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network. Susan and her guests will share techniques so you can facilitate your loved one's ability to safely follow your instructions, participate in daily activities, and express daily wants and desires. To learn positive solutions, creative ideas, and practical strategies that will build a healthy foundation of care. Welcome back to the Alan Charles Show. We are live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Alan Charles, and we are talking about what it's like heading back out into the new normal as restrictions start to lift. We now go out in a very different way. We are wearing masks around people and we are social distancing. And that has produced a lot of anxiety and fear and depression. And we're coming off uh, being quarantined and the isolation and loneliness that goes on on with that and there's depression and PTSD and anxiety and rage over the pandemic there are so many things going on out there so we're here and we're trying to make it as simple as possible to help all of you how to get back out there and how to have a mindset that you're going to be able to get out there and to do this and to get your foot out the door and have a successful day because what we're doing here is we're going to focus on living one day at a time. So, you know, to jump back on what we were doing, what we were talking before we went to break, um, adding to some of the things that you can do to get back out there and how to start changing your mindset and go from a place of anxiety and depression to doing some healthy things. And that's that's what we're going to focus on now. Let's talk about some healthy habits and things that you can start to do as you are getting yourself back out there. And if you haven't started to do these things, I would recommend that the, this is, is the time to start doing it. You should start doing this now. So I've regularly shared about working out and uh, how it helps me the beginning of the day. It's the one of the first activities that I do early in the morning. I find that it gets my day going right. It gets my head on straight. Uh, I am 
getting rid of a lot of the stress and the anxiety because as my adrenaline and sweat kicks in and I start to feel good, I, I get that dopamine kick that you get when you work out and when your body experiences uh, these great exercises and healthy habits that you start to feel good. So, that is one focus is working out. There's another healthy habit about eating and eating properly or eating in a routine or, you know, you have your three meals and then you set up your snacks during the day. Another thing that's become popular is having smaller meals and eating five or six times a day. But that is all stuff that you could balance and put out there so that you know, okay, these are habits, these are my this is my schedule, and this is what I'm going to do. People that just say, Oh, I'll eat when I'm hungry, I mean that might be fine, but if you're looking to put together a schedule and really have some balance in your life, you may want to actually write some of these things down so you can just keep an idea of what's going on. Now, as we start to come out from the pandemic and from the isolation and the quarantining, let's talk a little bit about physical appearance because I've heard many stories more Stories of people that are gaining weight have not been able to do exercise because of all the shutdowns and everything. So we're going to have some people that have gained some weight and we're going to have less people that actually lost weight. And there are some people that have been exercising and have decided that this time off or you know, the, some quiet time that they can really get themselves involved with uh, doing this physical um, workout and to change what their how their body feels and how they how they take care of themselves and they've taken a, a closer and a more healthy look at themselves, but. That's not everybody, and if that's you made those changes, great. But you now, it's not so much. I don't want you to focus on physical appearance. Yeah, you want to look good. Yeah, especially if you put on weight during this time, you know you're not going to feel good about yourself. But it isn't about your physical appearance. It's how you carry yourself, and that is the biggest thing. It's it's the biggest thing. For those that are in recovery or trying to get into recovery, it's how do you carry yourself? So, you know, in the beginning of recovery for me, I didn't carry myself that I had respect or I was respected. I didn't have confidence um, I'm seeing one of his suggestions is kindness. Um, I hope I had kindness for others, but I wasn't in a place where I had any kindness for myself. And so with all of those things, it wasn't so much my appearance. It was how I was carrying myself. And that's a struggle. When, when you don't feel good about yourself, you don't carry yourself well most of the time unless you just practice it and you, you carry yourself really well every day and maybe you have an off day, but you just you know how to carry yourself. So those are the things that I would start to take a look at also. Those are warning signs. I mean, if you're not dressing up the way you dressed up, you know, go out. Put things on that make you feel good. You want to look good, but it's important to feel good inside. And that's some of the things that we're going, what's going on right now is it's okay to stop and say, you know what, I'm really okay. Or, you know what, I put on some weight, but that's okay. Stop worrying about everything because it's a waste of time. What you want to do is be conscious in the moment. And if that's bothering you, well, you know what? You have choices. And that's what I say about being present. So guess what? I put on weight. Well, I'm not going to get all the weight off. It took me two months to put it on. So today, 
I'm going to start eating better. If you make positive choices, one choice at a time, and you actually move forward on it, that's huge. I mean, that is huge. Because so many people procrastinate. And so the whole idea of taking the initiative and doing this one thing, setting achievable daily goals, that's what it is. And we're going to talk about that when we get back. You really want to hear about this. You're listening to The Alan Charles Show. We're live on the BBM Global Network in TuneIn Radio, and we'll be right back. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom who's done it america is out of control today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior in his book the culture of excess how america lost self-control and why we need to redefine success Clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Welcome back to the Alan Shaw Show. And we are live on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio. And you are in the right place because I am the host, Alan Charles, and I am here every Thursday to help you get your life back. So you keep coming here every Thursday, and I will meet you here at 9 p.m., and we will talk, and I will help you how to maneuver through your day and how to maneuver through your addiction. So before we went to break, we started to talk about achievable goals and purposes. So um, that's one of the things, goal setting. And goal setting could be a day at a time. And what you do with that 24 hours is up to you. You've got 24 hours, and it's your responsibility. So on Thursdays, you actually only have 23 hours to work. worry about. I'm here for an hour, so you're here with me for an hour. The rest is on you. So you guys need to figure out how to get through the next 23 hours, but that's what I'm here to help you with. So we're going to set achievable daily goals. And everybody, your goals are going to be different. So Maybe it's, I want to cut down my anxiety today, or can I get through the day without thinking about how bad my situation is, or can I be positive and get through a morning that I am not going to think about any of the other challenges I have, but I am going to concentrate on getting this specific, I'm going to send out 10 resumes this morning, and until I do that, I'm not going to do anything else. And you know what? On these little daily goals that you have going on every day for yourself, congratulate yourself when you reach them. 
And I'm not telling you to go crazy, but if you do that, so let's say you're job hunting, you're stuck in the house, as we're sharing about getting back out there and everything. So you have some things that you need to do. If you complete them, congratulate yourself. Give yourself a little reward. Um, Have something that tastes good. Try something. Uh, Give yourself 10 minutes to snoop around the internet or to Google some strange word or or some vacation that you've always dreamed of and go look at something that that is going to make you feel real good inside. Those are all little things that you can do to reward yourself. And there's nothing wrong with rewarding yourself and feeling good about that you're making good decisions and that look at the difference I'm making in my life that I can change things. Just the littlest, the little bit of change, just the littlest bit of change is going to help because once you get something into motion, it's going to start moving in motion if you continue. And that's the work that we do, whether it's living one day with the life that we have, or if you happen to be in recovery, it's being present and living and doing the things that get you through the day that make you feel happy, that make you feel like you have accomplished something. So that's what these little goals are doing. They're going to make you feel like you're accomplishing something. And for a lot of us, that feeling of accomplishment and feeling good is such a driving force. But on the opposite end, when we're not feeling it, and we feel that we're wasting our lives or wasting our days, that will tend to make us not feel good. And we don't want to be in a place like that. We can't afford any of that right now. We have to embrace change. Change is good, especially when you're becoming a better person. So somehow you have to let go of all that past stuff and You need to be in the present. Another thing that is probably going to be very hard for you to do, but you can do it a little bit at a time, is letting go of resentments. So let's say you're heading back to work. There's somebody that you work with that you're not happy with. You're not thrilled. You know how great I haven't had to see my boss in two months. Guy's an a-hole. Whatever you're dealing with. You know what? You're in control of yourself. You now have are in the present. So now anything that you do moving forward, your actions are going to affect what's going to happen and what's going to come into your life. So that now you have this opportunity. So I do not have to be resentful. But I also don't have to forgive. If I can just be within myself that I would like to forgive people and you just move forward and slowly different things will start to happen. And I can share with you that that's probably one of the toughest things and the things that I was totally against. So, for instance, let's use my ex-wife. I was so resentful. I I hated her. I hated the things that she was doing. And she probably, a lot of the things that she was doing, she was justified. She was living with a man that was a drug addict. We had two children. She was beside herself trying to create a situation where this was a home and it was happy and it was going to thrive for both the kids and myself. And I was just so sick that I couldn't live in that situation and my addiction was progressive and it continued to get worse and worse and worse. And, you know, we continued the battle and we went through a divorce and we continued the battle and then we continued the battle. And part of this is starting to let go. And I can tell you now, and I can honestly tell you, so this was all We started the divorce process in 2006. We were divorced by 2008. We were fighting for years and years. And, you know, I'm not talking for her. I'm only talking for myself. But now here we are. And it's 14 years later. 
And my relationship with my ex, and I think a lot has to do with you know, the quarantining and some of the tough things that, that I'm going through, that she may be going through, you know, our relationship has probably gotten to the best that it has been since it was actually a good relationship when we began dating. So um, it's possible. It is possible to let go of the resentment because if you would have asked me, would I ever let go of my resentment towards her? I would say absolutely not. I felt that I was wronged in so many ways. No matter how wrong I was, I am wronged, and that's what matters the most. And I no longer think that way, and I'd rather be happy than sad. So let's take a quick break, and we'll come up and finish the show for you and and give you a few extra thoughts and ideas of what you should do to help yourself. You're listening to The Alan Charles Show, live on the BBM Global Network at TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current and concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. We are back on the Alan Troll Show, live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I am your host, Alan Charles. And I am so glad that you were with us this evening. We have been talking about some of the stresses and things that we're going to be facing as we head back out to the new normal. And we have talked about ways to combat the stress and the anxiety and even the level, if you're in recovery or newly in sobriety, uh, some of these challenges of going back out there are going to feel daunting. And they're going to be really, really things that you have to take a look at and be present. So most of the show today, we talked about, you know, if you had to wrap everything into one segment, it would be that we need to start living one day at a time. We really need to be present in the day and whatever we are struggling with, whether it's anxiety, depression, fear, as we head back out, I want you to be gentle on yourself. I don't want you to beat yourself up. We're, there's going to be more struggles. We're going to struggle. It just doesn't go away. That's what happens. We live life and there's challenges. But as you start to do this every day and you put those little daily goals into effect, you will start to see changes. And, and that's why I said congratulate yourself, reward yourself, because that's 
That's what makes life worth living is these rewards and these congratulations and and feeling good, really feeling good inside about what you're doing, how you're living. There's so many of us that sometimes the way we're living, really, we don't feel good about it. We don't even like what we're doing. Um, So you need to connect with yourself. You have to be aware of what's going on. Embrace change. And change is good. But when you're becoming a better person, you might not see yourself going through this, but be open and willing to change. And I can tell you, change is scary. Every time if I've started new jobs, I had to be in a different place, I had to go to a, a new location for something. Every one of those changes, I get that ping or anxiety in my stomach. But I just, I walk right through it because I know that even though there's change and there's anxiety that I can just walk out and I'm going to be fine no matter what. And that's what I want you to do is to build that up in your head to know that you're going to be okay, that no matter what, don't live in fear, fend off loneliness. Isolation can be dangerous. Now that we're allowed back out, start And this you should have already been doing. The isolation, whether it's Zoom, reaching the family, Zoom, just reach out to others. Now, next week, I'm going to open up my book, Walking Out the Other Side, and we're going to talk about taking chances and doing things that you desire. And I'm going to tell you the story of how I became a professional harness race driver and trainer. Thanks for listening tonight. We'll see you next week. You're listening to the Alan Charles Show live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll see you next week. Good night. He used to be an addict. Now he's substance free. Telling all about his crazy journey. This has been the Alan Charles Show with your host, Alan Charles. The views and opinions expressed by Alan Charles and guests on the Alan Charles Show are solely their own and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the BBM Global Network or its affiliates. Even though Alan Charles thinks he's an expert at life, we urge you to think about acting on his advice. Even though he has been in recovery for 10 plus years, he is a bit of a mashugana. He's given us the real story, the Alan Charles Show. Ups and downs, losing jobs and the glory, the Alan Charles Show. He helps others avoid that purgatory, the Alan Charles Show. been listening to the bbm global network the ideas views and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas views and opinions of the bbm global network company